In this video, you'll learn how to create your first React project. Today's video is sponsored by Atlantic.net. Atlantic.net provides great VPS hosting and they are offering a free one gig virtual server with SSDs and block storage for free for a year, plus $25 in free credits to use for other services they offer if you use the link in the description below. It's super easy to use. After I signed up, I was able to provision a new server in less than 30 seconds. And unlike other big names in this industry, they have great, always available technical support. They also have incredible reliability and redundancy on their servers. So try Atlantic.net to develop, test, or launch your next project. Click the link in the description below and use the code STACKER to get your $25 in credit. So the first thing that you'll need to do is install Node.js if you don't have it already. So go to nodejs.org slash en slash download and install the appropriate version. We'll need this so that we can use the Node Package Manager or NPM feature. Now in VS Code, I have a blank project folder open and it's called React Demo. So let's open the integrated terminal using control tilde. Now we'll type npx create dash react dash app and then period this will tell it to create the app in the current directory now I'll speed this up for time it usually takes a couple of minutes Now normally we would use npm to download packages into your project. Here we're using npx, which is a package runner. It's actually going to download and configure everything for us so that we can start with a nice template. All right, that's finally done. So now let's start our development server in our terminal. We'll type npm start. And that's going to automatically open in your default browser. So this is what the template looks like out of the box. Let's move this over. Make that a little bit smaller. All right, so let's take a look at the files and folder structure we have here. So we have our node underscore modules folder, and this is where all of our node dependencies go. You'll see that there's a ton of stuff here and you'll never need to make any changes within this. Just know that it's here and now forget that it's here. It's also not going to be included in the production app. Next we have our public folder and within this, the only thing that we're interested in is the index.html file. So let's open that up and take a look. This, let me close the sidebar, control B. And let's go ahead and close the terminal for now. Get that out of the way. All right, so this looks like a normal HTML file. We have some meta tags. We have our uh, title here. And then within the body, you'll notice here that we have a div with the ID of root. And then we have this fallback no script tag. This will be visible uh, if the user's browser has JavaScript disabled. So where is the content on this page coming from? Well, all of our code is in our source folder and React is going to inject our content into this root div element. So let's open the sidebar again and let's look in our sor source folder now. Within this, we have some CSS files, some JavaScript files, uh, an SVG file. Let's take a look at our app.js file. So here we're using normal JavaScript to import React from React. We're importing a logo from our logo SVG. We're importing a CSS file. And now we have a normal JavaScript function called app. And this function in React is called a function component. And this function is returning a React element. Now this looks like HTML, but it's actually JSX. And I have a microbyte video on JSX if you want a little more detail. So here we have a div tag with the class of app. And now we can't say class by itself because class is a reserved word in JavaScript. So in JSX, we have to use class name in camel case. And then after that, we have a header. 
and then we have an image. And notice on the image source, we have our logo. So our logo is actually a JavaScript variable that we imported at the top here. So in order to use JavaScript within JSX, we have to surround it by curly braces. So then after that, we have a paragraph, we have an anchor, and that's it for this component. Now, how are we getting this component onto the page? Well, at the bottom here, we have an export. So we're exporting this function, and this is just regular JavaScript. So now let's take a look at the index.js file. So in here, we're again, we're importing React, and now we're also importing React DOM. We're importing a CSS file, and now here we're importing app from app. This is the file that we were just looking at. The service worker, we're not gonna worry about. This is uh, for making your app work offline, and that is an entire subject on its own, so we're gonna skip past that. So next we're calling React DOM dot render, and this takes two parameters. The first parameter is a JSX object. Now in JSX, we can have user-defined components. So react.strictmode is a react-defined component. Now within that, we have a user-defined component app. That is the app from app.js. The second parameter here is our document get element by ID root. So this is targeting our root div in our index.html file. So this is how we're getting our content into the page. React DOM is rendering this content into our root div in the HTML file. Now really quick on this strict mode here, this is for testing. It's a tool for highlighting potential problems in an application. It also only runs checks in development mode and it does not impact the production build. Now notice here that in our user-defined components, we always start with an uppercase letter at the beginning. This is how JSX differentiates a user-defined component and a normal DOM element. So if we go back into our app.js file, you'll notice here that a div starts with lowercase as it normally would in HTML. But a, if it was a user-defined component, we always start with an uppercase letter. So let's make some changes here in this app component. After the header, let's add a paragraph. All right, and now we'll save it. It's automatically going to reload the page in the browser for us. So now if we scroll down, we'll see this is a paragraph. So the CSS is making the header portion of this the full height of the browser. Now back over here, notice that the app component is contained inside of a single div. What would happen if we added another element outside of that? So let's move this paragraph outside of that div and see what happens. Well, React doesn't like that, failed to compile. So what's happening here is that we're not adhering to standard JavaScript rules. A function can only return one thing. So within our return, we have a div and we have this paragraph. So there's two things there. This is not allowed in JavaScript. So we could fix this by using something that's unique to React and that's called a fragment. Within JSX, we can use a blank tag essentially. So let's wrap this. Then we'll move all of this over. And now I'll save this. And now it's working again. So you see here, we wrapped the entire uh, JSX here in this fragment. So now we're only returning one thing. Another note here with this return is that we're using parentheses as well to surround all of this JSX. This is so we can split our code onto several lines for readability. If we didn't surround it with these parentheses, then we would have to write it all on one line after this return. So now let's just say that we're done with this and we're ready to deploy it. Let me close the sidebar and we're gonna open the terminal again. And I'm gonna stop our development server by pressing Control C. So now we'll run npm run build. All right, let me open up the sidebar. And now you'll notice that we have a new folder called build. 
Within this is all of the assets that we need to deploy our website. Now I'll show you how to deploy your site fast and easy in a future video. This video was just to get you up and running with the basics, and I would challenge you to go through these steps and then play around with these files. Make some changes, break it, it doesn't matter. You can just delete it and start over. We'll start getting into some more advanced React tutorials very soon. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.